Chapter 4 brings focus to trigonometry. Now 4.1 talks about special angles, but we're not going to talk about special angles yet because I think you need some background information first. Here's a Cartesian plane, and within the Cartesian plane you have four quadrants. Quadrant number one, quadrant number two, number three, and number four. Now if you are going to draw some sort of a, an angle in the Cartesian plane, you start off with the initial arm first. And the initial arm lies in standard position, which is along the x-axis in the first quadrant. Now, to create your angle, you need to have some sort of a stopping point, and that is your terminal arm. Your terminal arm is attached to the initial arm um, at the origin, and then the terminal arm will spin around the origin and create your 360 degree circle. This angle right here is your reference angle. It's the smallest angle that's between the terminal arm and the x-axis. Now if I spun this a little bit further and created a wider angle, this is no longer the reference angle. Because remember, the reference angle is the smallest angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So this would actually be the smallest angle. And that's where the reference angle would be this angle right here. Let's move on to the special triangles. There are two special triangles that give way to your special angles and this is just something you're going to have to memorize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some tips as to how I memorize these two triangles. Okay, So the easier one to memorize would be the isosceles, the one on the right. You know that these two sides are going to be the same and you know that those two angles are also the same because once you take away the 90 degrees from 180 you only have 90 degrees left and you're going to split them in half which gives you the 45 and 45. I'm going to tell you that this side is 1 so you'll automatically know that this side must also be 1. To find that last side, the hypotenuse, you're just going to do Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2, which is your c squared. But I don't want c squared. I want just c. So we need to square root it. Okay, and that's it. That's your isosceles triangle. Pretty easy to memorize. Now the other one also has a 90 degree angle. So both of these guys are right angle triangles. But unfortunately, you're going to have to memorize the other special angles. Here's an easy way to memorize the sides, though. So this one side is 1, the next side is 3, and the last side is 2. Now that root 3, though, is 1.73 something, something, something. So I did write each of these sides in order from smallest to largest. And the reason why I did that is because it helps me to memorize where they go. Logically. If the 30 degrees is the smallest angle, it should open up to the smallest side, which would be the 1. Then the biggest angle, which is 90, should open up to the biggest side, which is the hypotenuse, and that would be the 2. And then the leftover, which would be the middle, should be the middle number as well, which is root 3. And there you have it. So those kinds of tips are what I use to memorize these two triangles. But what exactly do you use them for? In this question, they're asking you to find the exact values, so no decimals, of the three trig ratios. So sine, which is on the bottom, you'll see, so katoa, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the first ratio. The second ratio is the adjacent over hypotenuse, which gives you your cos. And then the last ratio is your tan ratio, which is the opposite over adjacent. Now if I was looking at 1a and it said 30 degrees, I'd know automatically that I was looking at uh, my scaling triangle because the 30 degrees is right there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each of the sides. So I already know that this is 1 root 3. Remember, this is just off memory. Okay, so those are all my sides. And then I'm going to label the sides because I'm looking from my 30 degrees. So here's my eyeball, which means that the opposite side 
is this guy. Here's my opposite. This one's going to be my hypotenuse. And this is going to be my adjacent. Okay, so in order to find sine 30 degrees, I'm going to go opposite, which is 1, over my hypotenuse, which is 2. And that's it. Cos 30 degrees is going to be my adjacent, root 3, over my hypotenuse, 2. And then tan 30 degrees is going to be opposite over the adjacent. And with this one, since you have a root on the bottom and you know how to deal with roots already, we want to make sure that there's no roots on the bottom. So you're going to have to rationalize it like this. And you're going to get root 3 over 3. So remember to rationalize your denominators. The next one, 1b, talks about a 45 degrees. So I know that they're talking about the isosceles triangle. You can put your eyeball at either end because both of them are 45 degrees. And again, we're just going to label the sides. So this side is my opposite side, the longest side is my hypotenuse, and then the one beside my eyeball is my adjacent. And we do the same thing. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and after rationalizing the denominator, this is what I'm going to get. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, which looks like it's the same as the sine. And then tan is opposite over the adjacent. And then I'm just going to simplify that, and that's going to be 1. OK, now the 60 degrees, we're going to have to go back to the um, scaling triangle. But now we're looking from a different angle. So my eyeball is going to be up here, which means this side is going to be my new opposite. This is still the hypotenuse because it's the longest side. But then this one is going to be the adjacent. So we're just going to try to keep up with the colors. Okay, So sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tan is the opposite over adjacent, and again, we're just going to simplify that a little bit. OK? So what if they don't give you these nice numbers, and they actually give you a larger number instead? So I want you to find the exact values for the three trig ratios, but instead for 120 degrees. What you have to do first is you actually have to draw 120 degrees on the quadrants. So 120 degrees starting along the x-axis, because remember this is standard position, you're going to have to open up 120 degrees, which is about there, and then draw your terminal arm. So notice that I went past the 90 degrees, which is right here, and we're just approximating it. You don't need a protractor. Then what you're going to do is you're going to create your special triangle, and it goes in the quadrant like this. So you're going to take um, your terminal arm, and you're going to create a vertical line towards your x-axis. OK, so there's your triangle. And what you're going to do is you're going to figure out your reference angle. So remember, the reference angle is right here. And that would be 180 degrees, because that's what the flat line is. Subtract the 120, and you're going to get a 60 degree reference angle. Huh, so a 60 degree, isn't that part of the scalene triangle? Let's fill in the rest of the scalene then. This one must be 30 degrees, which means the smallest side is over here, longest side is out here, and then the middle side is over here. Okay, now just going along with the quadrants, since this side is a negative x-axis, that's going to be a negative 1. All right, since this side is going along the positive part of the y-axis, that's still going to be a positive root 3. And uh, this terminal arm is actually always positive. We never have it as a negative. OK, now the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to do the three trig ratios. So sine of 120 degrees is, oh, let's put in our eyeball. So our eyeball is at our reference angle, which means this guy is our opposite. We have our hypotenuse and our adjacent. 
Okay, so sine of 120 is opposite over the hypotenuse. Cos 120 is our adjacent, negative 1, over our hypotenuse. And then lastly, our tan, 120 degrees, is root 3 over negative 1, which is also negative root 3.